All right, um, I debated about whether to make this video or not. <laughs> this is me starting the first major body section of a full-size R2-D2 print. Um, the surface on the TiVo Tornado printer is an imitation build tack surface. It's a textured surface that PLA sticks really well to. Unfortunately, the adhesive that they use to stick it to their whatever it is, acrylic type bed, uh, fails. So you end up pulling parts off and then it'll get a bubble in between the uh, bed and the sticker. So I bought a borosilicate plate online and it showed up recently. Uh, I had to print a different strain relief to be able to use it. The strain relief I had came up on top of the bed so it was going to be in the way. So what I've done here is I've put the borosilicate plate with some binder clips. Um, I then sprayed hairspray and this is my first print with this new setup. Now after leveling it you would think with a new piece of glass made for 3D printing that would be nice and level. Well unfortunately these t Tornado beds aren't quite level so there's a bit of a rise in the middle but I mean it's only maybe the uh, thickness of a piece of paper so I'm thinking it'll be fine. For my first print I'm printing part of the skirt, R2-D2 skirt, the very bottom of his body. Uh, I am printing the version that's broken up into four pieces. For the MR Battley's Mark III R2-D2 files. This is supposed to take 12 hours to print. Um, I might have 12 hours 24 hours maybe on this printer since I got it. So this is by far going to be the longest print that I print. Well, actually, no, that's not quite true. Actually, if I think about it, this spool holder took a long time. It's really thick, so it can support the weight of a one kilogram spool. So, so I might be lying there. I might have actually printed something that took about 12 hours. But uh, yeah, this is the start of the R2-D2 body. In 2017, I printed the dome. Did a bunch of hours of sanding on it, never got around to doing primer, and then just put it aside for a while because I was tired of sanding, trying to make it smooth, and um, just kind of forgot about it. Other things, other projects got in the way. And just recently, I was online and I saw some videos on YouTube of somebody making the full droid, and I decided to get back into it. So. Um, I'm not going to swing the camera around and show it in this video, but I do have the dome. I've been doing Bondo and primer and sanding and Bondo spot putty and sanding and primer. and It still has a ways to go, but I'm happy enough with it that I think it's going to turn out okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and print the body. Uh, the entire project is supposed to use somewhere around 25 spools of filament. Uh, it could take six months to a year to complete, to print everything and sand everything and prime everything and sand it and prime it and sand it and then finally paint it. So um, I do have two printers. So my plan is to print on this one. I'm doing this piece of the skirt because although it's a long print, it's not one of the longest. There, there's one part of the body that's two days to print. It's like uh, one day and 22 hours. So before I get into one that's that long, I thought I'd try one that's half as long and make sure that the printer is okay with the new setup, with the new glass there. And If that turns out, then I'll move on to probably a body piece. Well, actually, no, I'll probably finish the skirt. There's four pieces to the skirt. Let me glue them all together. Um, the thing about the second printer is I want to make sure that the settings on it are close enough to the settings on this one that if you're printing parts that interlock, that they fit properly. So if you're 
calibration is off in pretty much you know any XYZ direction then the pr part you print might be too big or too small to fit in the opening of the part that you printed on this printer. So first I'll print the skirt because it doesn't have any any parts that go into it. It's just four pieces that you print and then you glue together and you've got the skirt. Then I'll move on to one that uh, has a piece that goes inside of it and try to adjust the other printer. I'll try to leave this one alone and then adjust my other printer to see if I can get things to fit just right and then I'll be able to ramp up to printing things on two printers at that point. Just the small insert parts on one printer and the large parts on this printer. Because my other printer is smaller. So I just thought I'd make a video of the start of this print. Like I said, 12 hour print, the start of printing a full life-size R2-D2 motorized dome opening panels lights sound effects and being able to drive him around I am using PLA plastic which is not the recommended I recommend ABS would be the best but that has toxic fumes you need an enclosure a lot of times to be able to print it without warping um, next best would be PETG. Um, I haven't had luck with that, but I think that's because my only roll of PETG is like over three years old now and has absorbed enough moisture that I just can't get it to stick and it warps like crazy. And I think if I got a new roll, I'd probably be able to print PETG on one of the two printers at least, if not both. So that'll be something I'll be ordering a spool of that because some of the pieces that are load bearing stress stress parts like the legs the ankles that attach into the feet part of the the feet that uh, hold the drive units those type of things they want you to print ABS or PET G and then another thing I might do is buy a B, uh, PLA plus um, I have a little bit left it's also about three years old it's one of my oldest filaments the PLA plus and the PETG I both got from eSun at the same time about three years ago so I'll be experimenting with those filaments, but the skirt is not a load-bearing part at all. So that one, I'm just using standard PLA that I got free with this printer. Actually, I think I paid like an extra 10 bucks or something and got like eight rolls of filament. So I've got six rolls left. So this skirt will take, looking at the uh, part sizes, this skirt will take more than one roll so although it looks gray there <laughs> this is actually uh, purple it's like a very faded purple that I wouldn't use for anything else that I wasn't gonna paint just because the color is just not it's just faded enough that it's just kind of a light faded purple that I can't see having use for for any project that uh, I'd want to show off if it was something like, you know, for use like a doorstop or something, that'd be fine. But So I figured that's a perfect role to try out printing this skirt. If it doesn't work out, it's, you know, I'm out practically nothing in money. And if it works, then I've used some of this purple filament that I wouldn't use for anything else and have part of R2-D2 done. So fingers crossed that over 12 hours this will go. Uh, it is hot, hot in the Pacific Northwest where I am right now. We have an air conditioner that sits in the bedroom. And when that thing comes on, the lights kind of dim a bit. So it's not on right now, but I'm a little bit concerned that the print might lose a step or something if we use the AC unit. But again, this is a good test to see if that'll happen. So I will make a video after this is done, whether that's <laughs> completed print or a failed print and just cross my fingers that it goes as smoothly as it seems to be going now um, Aquanet hairspray on a borosilicate glass bed that's binder clip to the TiVo tornado bed printing standard PLA um, one of my other videos I think I showed I have changed the drivers the stepper motor drivers in the control box cut a hole in the control box put an up to a fan 
to get more airflow going over the new stepper motors drivers because they run hotter than the originals. Done a few other small mods, just a little parts tray, a filament guide so that my filaments coming from above that lets it uh, angle straight into the extruder so it's not going to a really tight angle. Um, the green, all these green parts were one of the other rolls of the free filament, or cheap filament. So little wheels to help you adjust the bed height. I printed several strain reliefs in this color and some other parts and the filament works great even though it was also sitting in a box for several years. It's not brittle at all. Um, it was vacuum sealed with desiccant in individual boxes and then they were all in one large box and the stuff seems fine, works fine. So, fingers crossed and I'll make another video when this ends, hopefully successfully.